So you want to get to the closing table on time? We got some tips for you coming right up. Hello everybody, my name is Barry Horvath and this is Moving Forward TV with your local market update. And I am Delane Gaston, thank you so much for joining us today. So on today's, we all want to get to the closing table on time, don't we? Yes, we do. Buyers do, sellers do, realtors do, title companies do, and guess what? So do we, the mortgage people. Everybody wants to get to the closing table on time, nobody wants to extend closing dates by no means. So. With the today's volume, it's been crazy. You guys all know this. You know, there's five and six and sometimes ten offers on a property. People are out in droves looking to buy houses, and if they're not looking to buy, they're refinancing the one that they have, it's right? Pre it's a pretty crazy time out there right now. So if you want to get to the closing table on time, I suggest you listen to at least one of the things we tell you on today's show because... We always have great information. We do. And sometimes for some buyers, it's like, oh, who, I knew that. Or some realtors are like, oh, I've been in the business for 30 years. I already knew that. Well, you know what? If you don't like the business right now, it's changing every day. It's totally different today than it was even six months ago. Wouldn't yes. you agree? Yes. It's not the same. Like You're right. Absolutely hard, not. Hard to believe that we are in month seven of COVID. Right. And right. I don't like to talk about COVID, but it affected all of this and a lot of what's going on right now. It affected the whole world, and it affected not just, you know, people's jobs, but it affected people's ability to buy houses, people's ability to refinance houses, people's ability to make payments and such. It's affected everything. So all of the information we're going to supply to you, and we're going to pour it from the bottom of our hearts and we're gonna share our wisdom and our knowledge, and you're gonna love it so much because you all call us about this stuff, and, we, and these are real life happenings in our world. We don't just make this stuff up, okay? The, we, we didn't go online and Google this. No. It happens every day, and we're doing a high volume of business right now in the mortgage lending world, so we wanna share with you some suggestions to get you to the closing table on Time. And that's what I was going to say. These are things that, that we're seeing come up over and over again. We've got one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best underwriting teams probably in the country. They are just amazing. And they are constantly trying to do everything they can to get things done as fast as possible. And some of the tips that they have given us. And we close, probably it's over $2 billion in business a year, um, our company does. And I'm not saying that to, to pat us on the back, but the, I'm just saying, that's a lot of files. They close, um, it was just under 10,000 units, I think, last year. So, And I can only imagine what 2020 is going to be oh, because of the volumes and everything. So, you know, closing 10,000 files a year, just about 10,000 files a year, you see all kinds of files come in, right? So these tips come from our underwriting department. Some of the stuff that they see all the time that maybe we can all ha help and fix on the, f on the front end so that, um, so that things don't delay the closing. As I said, none of us want to delay it. All so. right, you ready to jump in? I am. Do you want to do the roll first tip? Go ahead. Can I, first, can I have the first one? Yes. Because <laughs> I've been hammering this one hard, hard, hard. Okay, realtors, buyers, sellers, give a 45-day contract. If you're not giving a 45-day contract right now, you are putting duress on the system. And you can think, well, my seller won't accept it. Well, the seller should because... I'm going to be honest here. Can you close it in 30 days? Maybe, but do you really want a maybe closing? But it's not the lender's fault. It is, it's just the way it is right now. Appraisals are taking 10 to 14 days. When we order an appraisal, and if we request it in less time, the appraisers are so busy right now that they're actually refusing the order 
because they can't get to it. So we have an expected date that we want it back. If we put it in for something that can't meet their expectations, they're going to refuse it. And then what? It goes on to the next appraiser who may refuse it. They are not lacking for business right now. They're going to, they don't want the pressure of saying, I need a seven day turn on an appraisal. Right. They'll just say no. And I'm hearing it all the time. No, I didn't take your order because you guys expect it back. Unrealistic to close, yeah. unrealistic return date. So that's why they're that, returning. And it all starts there. Compound it with underwriting turn times 72 to 96 hours. That doesn't mean that. On Thursday, you're going to get it out on Sunday. No, that means on Thursday, you may not get it back out till next Wednesday. Okay? Those are business days. Let's be realistic about this. And it's not just on the underwriting turn times, but it's also on conditions because there's no such thing as putting a file in, even though we try to do everything perfectly on the front end there's going to be something else needed. We get conditional approvals. There are going to be conditions. There are documents. There's updated pay stubs. There's updated verifications on credit. And you know what? Even the credit bureaus are taking longer to update the supplements right now. You know, you can put a rush in, and that's another tip we'll have later because... <laughs> I was going to say, okay, show's done. Show's over. <laughs> he, he, he did. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, 45 day contract. A lot of it in, in tip one. 45 day. Get a 45 day contract because we can close it before. Honor before 45 Honor before. days. Mm-hmm. It, yes, and and uh, I you know, fired other, up and up. I know. That one. The other thing that I had heard about on things like that, and we just want to rest assured that you know, well, they put them in line according to closing date. Yes, we do put them in line according to closing date because we need that much time to get it done. So by you putting it sooner, the only thing you're doing is you're cl- cl- creating a lot of stress on the buyers, on the sellers, on the title company, on the mortgage company. Um, it's a lot of stress. It's just, I think I had said this before, but I'm, it's worth repeating, I think. Just, you know, in normal volume times, let's just say, for, for instance, a, you know, mortgage lenders are closing 500 files a month. Let's just say 500 files a month. Right now, they're closing about 700 files a month. So you can't do 700 files in the same timeline you're doing 500 files. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have people you know, jumping off of bridges or something because it's a lot of, it's, it's unfortunate. It's a lot of pressure. A lot has to happen. Give us time to do our job. That's a Give great, us time to great do analogy. Our job. We're going to jump off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, a little, that's a little I'm unsettling telling you, I, th- I'm telling you, I people, know. it's high, high, yeah, high stress. Yeah, the tensions stress. are high. Like, the tensions are you know very what? high my right now. My back hurts. My neck hurts. I'm getting headaches. Well, and, people, it's not, it, and it's health-related because of the stress and the pressure. And, right I, and I'm talking about the underwriters and stuff. They're working seven days a week. They're, seven days of the you. Everybody needs a downtime, right? They're not even taking that right now because of the volume. We're trying to push through these as Can I say as, one more thing about the 45 day contract so Mm -hmm. let's say you do get all right your seller will only take a 30 day contract all right so what's going to happen to your buyer when we don't meet the 30 day contract it's not just us it's every lender we're hearing i'm hearing 75 90 days i was going to say 90 in some cases yes from some lenders who just say don't even give us the contract right which we don't want to say that to people but what if you're you don't meet that Closing time. The deal could fall apart. They could be like, nope, I'm not extending the contract. And they go on to the next offer. And then they start over They're going to run into the same problem. They are. But, you know, people don't get that. So 45-day contract. And in my opinion, it comes down to education. Your seller will accept it if you educate him on what's going on in the market. He knows. He's getting top dollar for his house. He knows that it's a seller's market. And people are out there buying like crazy. Just educate him, you know, push the, push it, you know, walk it down the line for him. That means appraisals are taking longer. That means underwriting is taking longer because the volume is so big. Educate your seller so that he understands 30 days is unrealistic and it's just not going to happen. You know what I love when you hear this? Well, so-and-so could do it. Well, when was that? Like three months ago. They, yeah. They, they were able to close it in 28 days. Everybody could do it. Yeah. Our, average, our average time was 25 to 35 days. 25 days, some files we would close in 22 to 25 days. 
some some from 35 days. Never were we going 45 days, you know, a few months back. Right. It's just the way the the things are. Bottom line. Enough said. 45-day contract. Number two. Number two. Um... This is something that people have been doing, and it's been coming up a lot more. I educate them on on the front end, all of us loan officers, and I know you guys talk to to the buyers about it as well. Don't let them buy anything. (laughs) (laughs) How do you say that? I've had people buy cars, even though we've told them not to. Oh, well, my payment is now lower than my last car payment. Your last car payment had one payment left. We weren't counting it into your debt ratio. So now they've so they've gone and bought new cars and things. So um, or (laughs) appliances. I've seen people go and you know, oh well, you know, whatever. Best Buy was (laughs) having this amazing deal. No, no. So if you guys could help out with that as well, you realtor partners out there, do not let them buy anything. Just let them know. Don't buy anything. Don't do anything unless, tell them, don't do a thing. Call your loan officer. Call your loan officer. Call your loan officer. Call your loan officer and talk to them before buying anything. I actually had somebody call me one time and said, can I use my debit card to go to Dunkin' Donuts? (laughs) Tell them, no, no, you can't. No coffee for you. But only a munchkin. (laughs) No, but you know, you know, my favorite one of the year so far what? is the is the tropical fish. I know. <laughs> okay, so we have somebody. I hope you, I hope you're not watching the show. <laughs> They're buying an investment property. Investment properties require reserves. Well, they were already approved, so he thought he was good. He went out and spent forty five hundred dollars on tropical fish, and believe me, we're going to verify your assets when you close. And just because you still have enough money. There may be reserve requirements, meaning you need more money than you actually have to close with. You may need six months worth of payments in reserve set aside in a seasoned account. Don't go buy $4,500 worth of tropical fish while you're in the middle of a loan process. I know that sounds silly. Even though you were approved, you need to close. Wait till you close. The fish will wait, okay? The fish (laughs) will wait. They'll be there, I promise. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Did I say, was I clear about that? <laughs> you were. I, I thought I was. No buying fish. <laughs> All right. So the it. other thing that we were going to talk about is the effects of the effects of how, what, if you did buy something, yes. the effects it has on your credit or could potentially. It could, could be adverse on your credit. Have on your credit. Because we're going to refresh. The score could drop. Um, under- and that's the other thing. People think, oh, I'm approved now. No one's going to check. Yes, we are. There's what's called a credit refresh. It does, n- it does not, uh, it is not a hard pull, but they absolutely are going to look and see what did you do on your credit. And it abso- if they see some big changes on your credit, they absolutely will want it, it rescored. It's definitely going to. Yeah. It's definitely going to show up. Like even if you apply for credit at Bell's. Um, when you were checking out, when they said, we'll give you 20% off today. Plus oh, you're, cool. Plus, you look like you might be a senior now after this mortgage crisis, so <laughs> you'll get an extra 10%. <laughs> Come back on Tuesday. How was that? <clears throat> Perfect. <laughs> Sound just like the lady in front of me at Bell's. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just saying. <clears throat> now, just say no. Even though you're approved, um, they still do a credit refresh right at the end. And here's what happens. These are the things that slow us down, mind you. So when they do a credit refresh, and this is with a few days before closing, people say, why did you guys wait until the last minute to, to do this? That's why it's called a credit refresh. Right before closing, they want to make sure, A, the person didn't quit their job. B, they didn't go out and charge up a whole bunch of stuff or buy new cars or appliances, anything like that. So right before closing, they do a credit refresh. If they see, oh, look, they opened up a Bell's credit card like the lady or in front it was of just Barry. An, even if it was just an inquiry, right? They, it an, shows inquiry. up. So so here so what happens when they see an inquiry on your credit report? Now they want to know, did you open up the card? You, Bell's inquired, did you open up a card? If you opened up a card, I need a new statement. What do the people say? Because it just happened like probably a couple weeks ago. Well, I didn't get a statement in the mail yet. Yep. Guess what? I have to have something. We have to have something. Fannie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association, is going to want something. So we would need the person to contact Bell's, get some kind of an inter intermonth statement or something showing what the balance is today and what the payment is today. 
All you because think that they takes wanted, a little longer? It takes a little longer. <laughs> all because they wanted 20% off their $20 purchase, totaling a savings of $4. <laughs> and in then, which we spend $45 on ordering an updated supplement just, to your credit Because I was just going to say, because I'm not done yet. So <laughs> once they contact Bells and they get that whatever statement, we take that and we have to submit it into and pay $25 for a supplement to have it added to their credit report and supplements as Barry said in the beginning, in, in his point number one, which had 10 points in it, um, supplements are taking longer as well. So supplements used to take 24 hours. Now they're yeah. taking up to five days. Five to seven days. Do you think this days. is going to be a problem? And right you want to know closing? why you can't close in 45 days? Or These are the days? things that we're seeing happening. We're not making this stuff up. These are the things that are happening. Let's go on. What's the next <laughs> one? Moving money around. <laughs> oh, that's your favorite. <sighs> Moving money around. <laughs> Some people have lots of accounts. God bless you. That's great. <laughs> when you're doing a house, one account. <laughs> plus, plus they're hard. <laughs> Keep everything in one account. Well, just don't move money to 100 different accounts. Just, just one account. Keep things in one place, one account. Tell us um, why, Delaine. Don't put any large deposits into that one account. Only if you want to put, oh, look, you got paid and you're transferring that to this one savings account, that's fine. You're good. We're good with that. So we can see, okay, it was a paycheck. So any kind of large deposits, don't do, and I've had people do this lately, selling furniture. Well, I sold, you know, $2,000 worth of furniture on Sweet. you know Newport Ritchie Exchange or the marketplace on Facebook. Well guess what? That's there's no that's cash most of the time. Can we count cash? Most of you realtors know. No, we cannot count cash. So just remind your people of that. Help us to help you guys remind them no cash deposits, no large deposits at all. That is one of the biggest places mm. where we have I'm actually surprised at how many Realtors and or title agents don't know that cash is not acceptable because they show up with escrow cash for their escrow down And if payment. you are a title company watching this, please, if you have somebody who is financing, do not accept cash as your earnest money deposit. Yeah, we don't, you, they got, we can't verify it. Yeah, if we can't verify it, they can't count it. And they say, well, they got a money order. Was the money order bought with cash? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't verify it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right. Okay. So enough What's said on that. So let's talk about when you're going to close. Okay, you got everything clear to close. You're ready. And where are you getting the money from? Well, I'm getting it from my 401k. Well, guess what? A lot of these people working for these financial firms are working from home. There are delays on it. They've cut staff. You don't just get your 401k money. You don't just call up, hello, Mr. Fidelity, can you send me money? <laughs> yeah, I'll get it to you, be there in a couple hours. No, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes you have to go through your HR department. Sometimes it requires prior approval. We need documentation showing what, you know, how you got it. This all takes time. Don't wait till the last minute. If you know about how much money you're gonna to need to closing, have that much money on its way to you. It can take five to seven days to, to do some of these transactions. And if they're waiting until, you know, the 11th a few hour. Days, well, I don't want to pull it out until we absolutely need it. We absolutely need it 10 days ahead of time. If we have everything verified 10 days ahead of time, we're in good shape. That's when we're going to close on time. Because when we submit the final things to underwriting, the final conditions, as you know, they all come out you know, with always needed something. So we get all of that final stuff 10 days prior to closing. Just because we, we want to make up, we don't want you to be too comfortable. We make up stuff we need. <laughs> it used to be, again, in the old days, pre this craziness here, it used to be 24 hours and conditions were signed off on an underwriting. Well, right now, underwriting sign off for conditions is taking anywhere from three to four days. So we don't want to wait until the last minute. So let's give underwriting a chance too. If we have everything 10 days before time, that gives three or four days for underwriting to sign off give us the clear to close, then it gives closing department, they're backed up. Those poor girls are working until midnight. I've seen packages going out. So it gives them a chance to get their uh, ducks in a row and get the package out, you know, because everybody wants the package there three days ahead of time. I've, we want the package there three days ahead of time. Yeah. Then don't give us 30-day contracts. <laughs> I want to know something. What do ducks have to do with everything? <laughs> and, and why do we need apparently, them? Apparently they go in a row. <laughs> 
I just, you know, we've had, we have some different analogies. Earlier we were jumping off a bridge. Now we have ducks in a row. Yes. I want you to think about that. Ducks walk in a row. Have you ever watched them? They all, they all clench, yeah, clump know, together but, as babies, but, and then they walk in a row. But so do birds. They fly in sequence. They're they do. Row. I yeah. know. So Why can we, we say birds? birds in a row? Birds in a row, right. All right. Just for you, we're going to start saying right. birds I, in a row. I, I, all right. This is off topic. No, really? Yeah. <laughs> the ducks weren't. <laughs> you know, like, you ever, have you, you, you know, I know you shop for eggs, right? Yes. Okay. There's grade A eggs. Yes. They're all grade A. Have you ever seen a grade B? <laughs> <laughs> no. So why do they grade them? I don't know. I don't know. I want I'm, some... I'm guessing grade B doesn't make it to the shelves. <laughs> so that's what I want. Anyone that we'll have a prize. And someone who get me a grade B egg, show me one somewhere. We'll have a prize for you. All right. Someone's going to go and buy eggs and just stamp and a little stamp that says B. <laughs> but, uh, just to mess with I'm going to do that. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. No. So in addition to, you know, get your 401k, to 401k money early, same thing with HELOC. So I have people who, you know, there may be buying an investment property or something like that, and they're getting the money from their home equity line of credit on their primary residence or whatever. If you are getting money from a HELOC account as well, again, 10 days prior to, I know that you don't want to pay the interest on it. If you guys all want to close on time, we need everything like 10 days prior to closing. Everything, everything, everything done so that we can send it into underwriting for verification at least 10 days prior to closing. That'll make it a lot easier. All right. Next all right. tip. Enough of that? Enough of that. Get the money ahead of time. Boom. Done with that tip. All right. Next, this is kind of fairly new for COVID. COVID. There's um, a COVID, COVID thing. COVID related. I hate bringing up COVID things, but self-employed people, you have a new layer of things you have to do that you may not have had to do in the past. So um, we are, and when I say we, I mean the industry as a whole, require even 1099 people, you're a realtor, you're 1099, right? you have to provide a profit and loss statement year to date. And we're also going to ask for bank statements showing you still have deposits coming in, verifying that your income has not dropped. So very important, an extra layer step. Be prepared. you got to have it. Some people panic. And you may even need a balance sheet with it. So mm -hmm. um, be prepared. Self-employed people, meaning you don't get a W-2, you could be commissioned. You're still self-employed. You're going to need a profit and loss statement. I don't, it's just the way it is right now. Which brings us right to another tip that underwriting sent out to us, tax time. So coming up this week, October 15th, is the deadline. All personal tax returns for 2019 have to be filed by October 15th. So we will be asking for them. I know that due to COVID, they gave us a little bit of a relief and people, most people had to file by, or everyone was supposed to file by uh, July 15th. If you filed an extension, your extension's up. That's it. It's up on October. And if you are self-employed, your business returns had to be filed by September 15th. So just keep that in mind that um, we will be asking for those tax returns now. If we, if, And that could hold things up, too. I have it on a file right now. The people... Yeah. You know what I had? <laughs> They're running late. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. And it can be hard to scramble to get that together right. last minute. Be prepared before you go under contract. You're going to need this stuff. And so we're going not... to need proof that the person has filed. So if they are one of those last minute filers, <clears throat> and it happens, unfortunately, we have to get proof from the IRS that they filed. So right now what we're telling people is don't even mail Definitely don't mail it in. I would, if you don't do it electronically, then drive it, drive it. We've had people do this in right. April. Drive it to the IRS, make an appointment, drive it to the IRS, and have them stamp it that they've received it. That is what Fannie Mae is going to be looking for. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. What else we got? All right, then. Because um, we're running think, out of time. I know. The last thing that we wanted to talk about was the adverse market fee. I hate using the word adverse. What on does our adverse positive market show. fee what mean? What does that mean? It's adverse coming. and fee. Two yeah, bad things in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a fee for you. And we don't. The industry does. So um, the adverse market fee was, was being implemented a few months ago. They took it away. They delayed it due to COVID. Implemented, mind you, by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, yes. Federal National Mortgage so Association. What does that mean to you? Well, 
Good news, if you're purchasing a home, no effect whatsoever on you. Bad news, those of you looking to cash out, pay off debt, consolidate, get that lower rate, that adverse market fee will impact you. It's going to be a half point hit, an adjustment to your rate coming up starting December 1, which means if you remember we just talked about the 45 day contract, that means you better get your refi in now because we have to lock that loan and it's based on when we close. So um, if we have to lock you beyond December 1, you are going to pay that adverse market fee. So those of you who've been sitting on the fence. Waiting wait, for rates to go down, go down further. They're going to be going up. Yes, so jump yes. in now. Um, it will not impact FHA nor VA, government loans. Only um, conventional. Only your Fannie conventional Mae, loans. Freddie Mac. And it's not us. We don't make up this fee. It it's is, national. It's industry-wide. Keep that in mind. So. I hate that adverse market fee because I, know. You know I think people are really I think benefiting. They're trying, honestly, I think they're trying to slow down the volume. Well, they are trying to That's slow it down. That's what it is. They're trying to slow down the volume and, because and, it's crazy. And people say, well, it doesn't make sense for me to refinance because I'm not dropping by two points. Someone told me I need to drop two points. What a myth that is. I know. It really well, depends on your that's loan old. size. That goes back to the early 50s. years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to tell people back then. You're, you know what? You, mm. If you lower your rate by a quarter or even a half point and you have a good size loan, it might make sense for you to refinance. So, And it depends on how long you're going to be in this house. Yeah. So, you know, if this is a stepping stone house for you and you're moving in two years anyway, no, don't yeah. refinance yeah. because there are good costs stuff. associated with doing it. All right. Let's talk about the community right now. We have October Breast Cancer mm -hmm. Awareness. We are doing a virtual uh, bowling for boobs event right now with West Pasco Business Association. We can't do the live get-together event, but we are doing a virtual type event. Um, people still need our help out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking to support people uh, suffering from breast cancer here in the community. So go on WPBA.biz, check it out, um, make a donation. A dollar helps. Every dollar helps. So um, we appreciate you supporting that. Thank you, Melanie Snow Waxler. Thank you, Paul O'Neill. Um, two survivors um, that are spokespeople for this event. Grateful to have you both in this community and supporting that event. And Lunch and Learn coming up for November. We're going to talk about Quick Qual. Excited about that. Great tool for our agents and our home buyers. You're going to love it. It's an app. Don't miss it. It's the Tuesday, November. Something. It's we'll November tell you something. next week. Yeah. <laughs> We'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks, Second everybody, Tuesday, for November. watching. We are today and every day. Moving forward. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye-bye.